Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today I'm going to take you through all the things that you need to know in regards to the Xenoblade 2, the, the, the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 combat system, because it's not as scary as you might expect, or maybe you've just started up the game and you don't know what's going on. It's entirely possible, because it's a lot of information at once. But you really shouldn't be that scared. Once you've got the basic idea down, honestly, it's it's just a breeze, and the game is very gradual in how it teaches you everything. But nevertheless, I'm basically just here to say, don't worry and then provide some proof as to why you shouldn't. Okay, this isn't the best example. There are enemies everywhere. I tell you what, I think I'm gonna fast travel to somewhere a little, a little bit nicer, a little bit less terrifying. So here I am, I'm on Great Spine Boundary, and I'm gonna go and try and take out some nasty enemies. Um, I actually believe I'm probably using really the wrong blade for what I need to talk about later on, but for the time being, it's fine, because we're gonna talk about the absolute basics. Now, the first thing you need to know about <laughs> really basic is auto attack. Now basically when you engage with an enemy I'm not doing anything and yet I'm still attacking. This is unsurprisingly the auto attack and it basically is just kind of like your standard attack and um, it does it automatically unless you're moving around. If you're moving around like this it won't do anything as you can no doubt see. I'm not firing my gun. That thing's already dead. Maybe we're, may, may, maybe this is too far back. I need to find a worthy foe. You two, you two, we, let's, let's take out these other people, these other drivers, let's take them out, why not? So um, yes, you've got the auto attack, but then what's far more interesting than just leaving the controller alone and hoping you win is using the arts, which are controlled with the X, Y, and B buttons and are related in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen that you see there. Oh, I remember you, I could probably take you out now. So um, anyway, yeah, now we'll take him out in a minute. Um, so if, for example, here, if I press X, I use Daring Shot. And that is, an, you know, that has special effects and various arts. They're kind of like special moves, if you like. The auto attack is your basic attack, and the arts are like your special moves, as I've just said. Now, in order to charge up the arts, I've actually got a special ability that allows me to use one of them straight away in a battle, but generally you can't. Um, but uh, in order to charge them up so that they fill up, you see the little, uh, in fact, I'll use one so you can see. That's what it looks like empty. That one at the top there where it says daring shot. And where you see that slowly filling up around there, that is because I'm using auto attack. Now using auto attack fills your arts and um, each art is filled individually. So um, as you can see here, I've used one and yet daring shot's still nearly full and daring shot and I can use it straight away. Lovely stuff. And uh, yeah, that's, that, that's kind of the basic stuff with arts. It's filled up by, um, sorry, I've got some notes. I need to keep looking at the notes. I can't forget anything. Your arts are filled up by your auto attack and you use them individually and they have different effects. For example, you've got, um, you see down there at the bottom, grenade launcher, that has blowdown. So if we have a look at the enemy and I use this blowdown effect, you can see they get blown down, they get knocked down. And there are various other effects I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail later on. But uh, I need to move on to the next part, which is, what is it? <laughs> Blade combos! Yes, blade combos. I need to I need to make sure that I get all the names right because otherwise it's gonna get very confusing. So blade combos. Now these are assigned to the A button, which is um well, it's represented again down in the bottom right hand corner where A would be. You can also see it at the bottom, but that won't always be there. Now blade combos are basically very, very powerful attacks. And as you can see here, I've got stone, aqua, and gravity. That's my one gravity assigned to A, but to ZL and ZR are my teammates, the other drivers in my party. They also have their own and I can control them. For example, if I press ZR, I'm gonna use stone, which is Tora's move. And um, you should see a great big rush of, there we go. Yeah, you've got a great big rush going on there. And um, now, um, as you can see, there's a little tree up in the top there. So uh, I'm gonna very quickly switch to Pyro. I'm gonna tell you about switching characters as well. Uh, switching blades, sorry, not characters. And um, so now I just press A, you see I'm a fire type, which means that on the tree, you can see a fire icon, which means that I can use mine now. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm gonna use it anyway, but um, I, I will go into a little bit more detail at the same time as soon as I've done this. There we go, Volcano. So you see, I combined my blade combo with um, one of my teammates' blade combos, and uh, that meant that extra lovely stuff happened. And I'm dead, because I'm not paying attention. Here we go, now we're taking out one individual enemy, so this should be a little bit more straightforward. Get the weapons out, and as you can see, already got one of the things already activated, due to a special perk I have. Uh, come on, Sniping Brent, let's take you out. 
Yeah. So anyway, um, the uh, blade combos by using A, individually they're referred to as blade combos, and then when you combine them like I did, which I'll go into more detail properly, rather than that terrible, terrible excuse for a <laughs> for an expl explanation that I have there. Um, they are filled up by using arts. As you can see, if you look at where the A button would be on the uh, right-hand side of the uh, little diamond pattern in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that that's about a quarter filled. And then if I tap this to use an art, I use that art and it fills up even more. But what if you want to try and get it even faster? You want to fill that up even faster? Well, if you time it correctly, and as soon as you use an auto attack, you very quickly use an art just like that. You see the little blue ring. I'll try and get it again to show you uh, again. There you see that blue ring. That means I've charged up even more. I think you, um, it charges up even more. I'm not exactly sure of the exact amount, but nevertheless, that is very useful and uh, can become very handy. For example, I'm gonna use gravity now. This is a blade combo. Gravity has been done. And as you can see that tree at the, bot at the top there, this isn't very well planned because I haven't got any, <laughs> I haven't got any elements or any types. I think they're called elements that can go on from that tree. So, um, you know what? I think I'm gonna kill this thing, change blade, and uh, we'll get back to you. Here we go. Here comes sniping Brent again. For some reason, this enemy seems to be much more powerful than its level should be. Really, you know, it's only level what 18. I can't. I can't even get it. Okay, I've decided to go for these drivers instead just because sniping Brent seems to be flying around all over the place and I just I just need to beat something up basically. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to fill up the gauge um, using, you know, various things. I've changed blades so we should have uh, more scope for, uh, for doing some proper fusion combos by uh, combining our various blade combos. So it should be good. Uh, back in a mo. Okay, so now we started. We've got a water type there. I'm going to build up my. Um, I'm going to build up my uh, various different things. I need to be wind. Okay, I need to be wind. Uh, so I need to stay with this. And uh, I'm going to. Oh no, we've killed him. Killing enemies means you can't do a combo on them. Okay, so now I've bit. I've, we've done the first one. So we're on water, and now we're using an, a ground attack. And now I'm going to use my A for final disaster. I need to do some various prompts, which I'm not prepared for. That wasn't brilliant, but that was final disaster. And as you can see, it did an enormous, enormous amount of damage. So it is well worth employing these whenever you can. Only thing is, it can sometimes be a bit tricky to work it out. But uh, you'll get a feel for it. And again, this may seem overwhelming, but seriously, once, once you actually get a hold of it, it becomes a little bit more straightforward. You have to build up each individual combo, your A button attack, if you like, um, to be a different level. So for example, as you can see, we're on tier one. In order to use another one, I needed to be on tier two. And you can tell which it is by looking at the icon in on the right in the diamond down in the corner. I, I need a pointer or something. I need to point at things. That'll make things so much easier. Okay, so that's the basics. That's how you do loads and loads of lovely damage against your enemies. And um, you, you, can pretty, you can get by pretty easily. To be honest, you could probably get by with enough grinding just by using auto attack and arts, to be honest. Um, if you really didn't want to, if you really didn't want to start doing combos and stuff, but I would really recommend you give it a go because they are so worth it, as you can probably see. You know, this Lance Turkin is going to get killed really badly. There we go. But there are a couple of things you need to take into account as well. For example, switching blades. Now, as you can see at the moment, I have got Sumi as my active blade, but by pressing on the D-pad here, if I press right where Pyra is, Pyra pops out instead, and suddenly I'm fire type, and I've got different arts and all those sort of things. So you're never limited to just three arts. You always have access to more, unless you've only got one blade, in which case, what are you doing with your life? Unfortunately, you can't just switch blade willy-nilly. As you can see, there's a meter building up around Pyra, and that is time-based. Doesn't matter what you're doing, it's just, you know, by being in the combat, you're slowly gonna be able to change blade. Basically, it allows you to stop, well, it stops you from spamming it, basically. So that's good stuff. Another thing I wanted to mention is um, attacking position, and I uh, need to switch to Pyra to do that. Now, uh, as you can see, double spinning edge on the left-hand side says side attack up, and that means if I am at the front, for example, I will deal a decent amount of damage, but if I'm from the side, you'll notice that there'll be a special thing around. You see that sort of design around the numbers. That means I'm doing extra damage. So if you see side attack or something like that, depending on where you're positioned, make sure you're in the right place for the right art. Nice. Another little detail that's worth mentioning is aggro. Now aggro is basically um, 
kind of like um, where your enemy is focusing on. So if you have a high aggro against the enemy, is that a core crystal? It's not. It's 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 a it's an orc's core. That's boring. For example, some characters will naturally try and draw aggro towards them. We don't want to draw aggro to Rex because he is an attacker. You want to draw aggro as much as possible to your tank, which is a high defense enemy. So the enemies will all be attacking your tank and not your attackers. Meaning, generally, that's good. And you can do various things to um, change this. For example, if I switch to Pyra, you can see um, Rolling Smash at the top there is an AoE, which is area of effect, and aggro down. Meaning if I do this, it will actually reduce my aggro towards that enemy, which is excellent, because I don't want Rex to have any aggro. I don't want Rex to be attacked because he's fragile. He's a glass cannon, if you like. And that's pretty much the size of it, to be honest. Um, as I've mentioned, you know, sort of, various uh, status effects and things like that. You'll see things like break and topple, and break is pretty pretty basic, but some lead into others. For example, if you break an enemy um, before the meter that says break depletes entirely, which annoyingly I can't show you right now, um, if you manage to use topple on them, they will be toppled and they will be stunned for a good period of time. So that's really, really useful. Basically, the game is is fairly good at teaching you all of these things, and the best way to learn is to just get stuck in. So if you are concerned about, you know, sort of the, the gameplay and the combat being too complicated, don't worry. It seems like a lot of information, but it's drip-fed to you, and you'll just acquire it slowly over time. And uh, it's a hell of a lot more straightforward than previous Xenoblade games, that's for sure. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Maybe I've alleviated some worries or some doubts. And uh, you can jump straight in with Xenoblade 2 with absolute confidence, or at least marginally more confidence than you did before. Also, if you're interested, I have turned off the, uh, enemy, the, uh, the voices of all the characters because it was too loud. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you run around looking for health potions and four million different other statistics that you need to keep track of. Don't worry, it's not that many. I'm exaggerating for humor's sake. <laughs> and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>